play. Does a great job covering the 49ers. Plugged in on the locker room in the Niners cap situation. Go back to a uh, go back uh, back to the Stafford days. Back in the early 2000, uh, what is it, 2010, 2011. Niners on the Niners beat doing a great job. David Lombardi, good morning. Welcome to the Rose. Joe Shashkin, the butcher. Bonte Hill, of course, and good to have you on here on the morning roll. So let's just start with the salary cap situation first and foremost, then we'll get to Sam Dardo, Cleve Farrell. Where are the Niners operating at right now with the salary cap? How are they able to sign guys like Hargraves and Dardo and Farrell? Well, only one of them was expensive in Hargrave, and they completely backloaded the deal. So they, they have these... Just for cap purposes, if you give a guy a bigger signing bonus, you could spread it out over several years. And then you could add a little flavor to that by adding these ghost years to a contract. And they gave Hargrave two bonuses. They gave him $23 million today, Hmm. bank account full with that $23 million now. And then they got another bonus for $6 million that kicks in automatically next year. And the reason why that one doesn't kick in until next year is they could spread it further out. Because you could spread it out up to five years per bonus. So if one kicks in next year, you could spread the contract out over six years instead of just five. So they're playing financial Tetris is what I want to call it. And that's how they were able to take a deal that's worth $21 million annually, and it only has a $6.6 million cap hit this year. Wow. So, uh, you know, the, the, a lot of these bills are going to come due later. But the thing is, the cap is getting higher and higher every yeah. year yep. at least you're betting on that you don't want it to go back backwards like it did after covid so uh but the 49ers are betting that league revenues are going to cause the cap to go up and i call it surfing a wave right you're just trying to surf that wave and you hope that wave doesn't crash down on you and it crashed down on the rams uh this off season hasn't crashed down on the 49ers yet so that's how they've been able to fit these moves yeah it's very interesting way of putting it uh, the financial touches i like that i like that phrase a lot uh, when i look at their quarterback room right now i mean uh, depending on how you break it down because you, you're talking about guaranteed money spread out over years you're looking at about 15 million bucks or less for the entire quarterback room that's tremendous value and i love the no risk acquisition of sam darnold how are you viewing the quarterback room right now yeah, the sam darnold situation is fascinating to me because he can end up making more than uh, Baker Mayfield or Jacoby Brissett. I, I think that both those guys signed for deals like under $10 million, mm-hmm. including incentives. Darnold can be up to $11.5 million if he somehow takes over the quarterback room and plays into the playoffs. But it's only $3.9 million against the cap because all those incentives are not likely to be earned. They're classified as, as incentives that, you know, Darnold didn't meet last year and would have to go above and beyond expectations to meet this year. So what you have here is a low-risk deal, as you said, that they could fit into their salary cap at $3.9 million. But Darnold had to sign on to it as well, and, and right. he played well, actually, last year for Carolina over the past six, last six games. Those, those are the best games of, of his career. So to sign on, to lure Darnold into signing into the deal – you had to give him potential upside. And you said, hey, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty in the quarterback room, right? Both Lance and Purdy are technically still hurt right now. Lance is obviously much further along than, than Brock Purdy, who just had his surgery. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, you had to give Sam Darnold some reason to come to the 49ers instead of elsewhere. And those incentives are, are what do it. So it is very low risk, but uh, it is potentially high reward also for Sam Darnold. Yeah, David Lombardi, 49ers insider, does a great job. So, Sam Darnold, uh, you bring up Brock Purdy. Obviously, he had the surgery last week on the tour in UCL on his right elbow. Uh, Trey Lance not quite ready yet. So, does Darnold have a realistic chance to start a game or two for the 49ers this season? It's a quarterback-friendly offense. We know about Sh- Kyle Shanahan and the way he schemes it up. I, I, I'm, I'm bracing myself for Darnold to start a couple games, David, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, I think people are weirdly freaking out about this. A month and a half ago, the 49ers literally ran out of quarterbacks in an NFC championship game, and that was at the tail end of a season in which they had to use three different starting quarterbacks just to get to the NFC championship game. So that was exceptional, and then I don't think we've ever seen the type of injury catastrophe that the 49ers went through at that level of football, right, at an NFC championship Mm -hmm. game. It was crazy. We were all watching it. We all saw Christian McCaffrey try to attempt to pass to, to nobody. <laughs> uh, and I think it left the 49ers scarred, as it should have. So, of course, they've got to try to add as much as possible within their salary cap constraints 
to the quarterback room. And, and I think that Sam Darnold was a good addition at the price point that they were looking for. Remember, Kyle Shanahan thought about trading for him a couple of years ago. Yeah. They ultimately decided to trade up to, to number three and pick Trey Lance. But Shanahan does like the, the athleticism, the mobility that Sam Darnold has brought to the table. There is a belief here that he was in a terrible situation with the Jets, not a great situation with Carolina. And, you know, you're not bringing him in to say, hey, um, you've got to be the starter. This is your team now. You're bringing him in to be part of a larger quarterback room. You have to maximize the amount of darts you have to throw at a wall. Yeah. Because last year – everybody got hurt. You, you didn't have any darts left at the end no. of the season. So you've got to restock the darts. And there's so much uncertainty right now, especially with Purdy and, and the elbow, that, that you just have to increase the numbers. I don't think they're done in the QB room. I think they're going to draft somebody as well. So that, they, that way they have four uh, going through this off season. I, I'm with you. I'm drafting a quarterback every year, even if I've got one of the apex guys. Like, there's there's no reason not to. It's it's value, and you either develop that guy for your own roster, or you can move him on down the line. Um, there's been a lot of guys to leave. Jimmy Ward, uh, Menahue. I mean, just go right down the list. That they've lost a lot of guys. Mike McGlinchey, who we were talking about earlier. They've added some guys in free agency. Are they a better team right now? I mean, I know the draft isn't here, and they've done a great job in later rounds. But, like, as of right now, are they trending toward being a better team next year than they were at the end of this year? Yeah, so if you're, 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 you put that word trending in there, I think they're trending toward, toward being a better team. I don't think they are a better team right now because they only have 57 guys under contract. And uh, by the time this is all said and done, as far as building the roster, they're going to have 90. So they still have 33 spots to fill for the off-season roster. So, of course, their depth is not not what it was because they have lost some of these players. And every single departure in my book, you know, I, I, I've kept score, I've uh, has been expected, except for Emmanuel Mosley. I thought right. that Mosley wouldn't earn $6 million. I thought that he would be a 2 or $3 million guy coming off an ACL. But Detroit gave him 6 The 49ers didn't match. Everything else has been kind of part of the plan. They have to restock that depth with, their draft picks and with budget signings. They can't overpay for guys because they don't have the money to do it. But along the front line defensively, I think they're already better than last year. If you just look at the starting 11, because they have Javon Hargrave, who's one of the best pass rushing defensive tackles in football, and they had a really bad interior pass rush last year. Yeah, that was no doubt. The defense is weakness. Yep. So they've, you know, addressed that. And now they, they have Isaiah Oliver to be their slot cornerback. Yeah. And remember last year, they didn't know who the slot cornerback was going to be at the start of the year. Right. Jimmy Ward had ended up taking that position, and he got better as the year went along. But, that you know, that was a work in progress. Isaiah Oliver is a legit start, uh, starting slot cornerback. Mm. So you've taken care of two positions along the front lines. Now it's about building out that depth. So they're not better right now overall, but they can be if they do the rest of the offseason right. I like the front line of the defense, though, right now. They were number one last year. I think their starting 11 is, is better right now after those two signings. David, will Kinlaw be part of that 11? Do you think the Niners move off from him, or do they keep him and hope that he's healthy this next season? Well, it, uh, his, his deal's guaranteed. He's got one, one more year left on his deal, and he was a first-round draft pick. Mm -hmm. So it's $4.5 million fully guaranteed. I think, you know, Javon Kinlaw is Javon Kinlaw. He's a player with, with knee issues, obviously, who is probably better as a rotational piece than as a starting piece. And they have Javon Hargrave now to be one of their starting defensive tackles. They have Eric Armstead to be other starting defensive tackle. I think that Javon Kinlaw as a, you know, a depth piece that, you know, doesn't have to carry the burden of, 30 to 40 snaps a game, maybe some of these 15 to 20 snaps a game, right. I think that's a position in which he could contribute. And there's no loss in letting him do that because the money is guaranteed to them anyway. Yeah, I think Parag has done a great job manufacturing room to make moves for this team and massaging the cap. Like you said, the financial Tetris, I love I'm going to steal that from you, David, I, and I'm going to reference it every time. I love that. He may not, David. So don't no, be surprised. Well, sometimes I steal and I don't give credit. That's me not citing. I'm not a journalist. I apologize. But no, getting back to the Bosa thing, like with money, how does this play out? Are, are they going to do the August 1st or first week of August extension? Um, are they going to wait it out? Are they going to franchise tag this? Just just your feel on the situation. I think everybody, it's, it's one of those ironic things. Everybody would rather get it done sooner, but then it turns into the staring contest because everybody's trying to get terms that are a little bit more favored, favorable to their side. So it's deadline pressure that usually 
makes these things move along. Once you have that deadline pressure, it's like me writing an article, right? I could write it right now, but it's not due until 3.30, so I'm not going to start it until 2.30. Kind of so so it's, 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 yeah, it's one of those things where Nick Bosa and his representation and the 49ers, Brog Marathe, their side, you know, in an ideal world, my article would be done right now, but right. Um, but but it's not going to be done. Sounds like me at college, deadline. David. Sounds like so, me at college. Yeah, yeah when exactly. Was due. Yeah. That deadline pressure is going to be training camp. Right. That, that you know, everybody everybody needs both of their training camp, or, or at least not too far into training camp. I know Joey's held out before. I think the 49ers would like to avoid that. Nobody likes the distraction, but it's going to get done. I mean, the the one thing that the 49ers have a really good track record of financially is paying the, the, the A-listers, right? Yes. And they've mm-hmm. chosen to pay. They decided to trade the Forrest Buckner because they thought they could replace him with Ken Law. It didn't work out. But the guys they've committed to paying, they have gotten those deals done. Even when people thought they wouldn't get Debo Samuel done last offseason, they got it done. And Bosa, you know, he's so important to this team. Uh, he wants to be there. Uh, they're going to get it done. You know, some of our roasters, David, before we let you go, are saying the biggest loss this all season is the boombox guy. What's our guy's name? Who's going down to Houston with D'Amico Ryans? He comes out with the boombox. Well, yeah, Nick Cray. Yeah, Nick Cray, there Houston. you go, Nick Cray. Yeah, yeah, Nick Cray. He was. He just bought a house in, in, in Houston. I follow him on Instagram, so congratulations to him. He's uh, settling in over there. He's probably going to have the same role. <laughs> uh, he, I mean, you've seen a lot of 49ers staffers and players go to either Houston or, or Tennessee yeah. this offseason because because that's where Rand Carthon went. So, oh. you know, success is, is one of those things that spreads across the entire league, and uh, it's not just limited to coaches or, or players. It's limited to the boombox guys. So John Lynch <laughs> and the 49ers are taking internal applications for this. They, they said they're what? taking applications from everywhere, but it's probably going to be an internal candidate that's elevated to boombox. Shasky. I would Shasky. love to be turn-up guy. <laughs> would that be the would boombox be, guy? Oh, my God. Did you kid you even lift that boombox? Well, I would wear my custom number one Shasky jersey out to, you know, oh boy. me, Trent Williams, and Debo? Yeah. Come on, dog. I don't dog. think you could lift that boombox. Come uh, I don't on, know. dog. you got to hit more weights I, at the Olympic Club. Oh, that would be uh, so yeah. sick. That what would a be job. Club. I love that play. Yeah, the Olympic Club. we gotta, we got to oh, get David, Lomb- David, oh, David Lombardi. David Lombardi. Dude, the guy's ripped. I'm, we're well, not lifting weights. He's a swimmer, and we can go into yeah, the natatorium. No, 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 no. And, David has and, no body fat. I'm not lifting weights with yeah, him. Well, I'm not going to get embarrassed. He is in good shape. Uh, yeah. that, the pool at the Olympic Club downtown, is that's one of the nicest indoor pools. It looks like a cathedral. 100%. It's, uh, it's really crazy. Anybody who's listening right now, I haven't seen it, just Google Olympic Club San Francisco yes. pool. It's, it's really cool. David, no we'll doubt. go have lunch uh, very soon there, I promise. All right, me, you, and Bonte, oh. we'll break bread. I, I I would love that. Let's do it. Well, David, sounds great. Man. Thanks Good for stuff coming as on. Always, man. Thanks for explaining this cap situation. As a fascinating offseason for the 49ers, of course. Still got a little money to play with here. We'll see what they do for the rest of the offseason. David, take care, my man. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, have a great day. All right. You too.